Okay, we're back. So today, uh, we're going to go over the solution to the factorial uh, problem. And we're going to, here's the solution in front of us now. Line 2, we grab some input and we can type something in for uh, a string, although we don't have to. I mean, if I run this like this, it'll just sit there asking for a number and then I can type in 4 and it'll give me the result. But I think we should make it look slightly nicer and we should say something like uh, factorial of like that and then oops forgot the close quote and then we'll say here's the important part about the factorial solution and that is that the the total in the beginning when we were adding before in the, our previous examples the total was always started out as zero if you make this total equal to zero in the beginning it won't work and the reason for that is because we're not adding now we're not getting the sum of something rather we're getting the product of numbers because that's what factorial is right so for example if I said, um, you know, what's the factorial of, I've got to make it a comment here. So the factorial of 2 is equal to uh, 1 times 2. The factorial of 3 is equal to 1 times 2 times 3. And so therefore, obviously, I mean, the, I'm, I'm sure by now you're recognizing the pattern. 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. And so it's just a product of numbers. And, and you, if you notice the 1, 2, 3, 4, that's just we can, we can generate those numbers in a loop. And that's how to, what I'm doing in line 8. But I have to go one more than, right? Because that's how range works. And, but I can't start with, I cannot start with zero. Because zero multiplied by anything is always going to be zero. So I have to start with one. And nice, because one times anything doesn't change the number, right? So there's my for loop. And now instead of adding, you can see I'm multiplying. And then at the end, I print my total and we can make this look nice too. We can turn it into an F string and say uh, the factorial of n is total. And so now if we save it and run it it says factorial of 5 should be 120, and it works. OK, so that's all we're going to do for that problem. Um, right now, what I wanted to go over with you, or what our next assignment is going to be, is if you remember, um, we played a game. So let me kind of get my blackboard up. And uh, if you remember, we played a game where we had um, a computer, uh, uh, like a guessing program, right? Where we said, OK, um, the computer, right? Guess, pick, chose a random number, right? And then from one to a hundred, and then the the user had to guess the number. Okay, and the computer just said higher or lower. And then, or, or it could say correct. Okay? And the, the user would just keep guessing. 
So this program, the code to this program, uh, is here. And um, we can open it up. I think it was in our um, factorial. No. There it is. OK, so that was the code that we, we used. And so we, we used the import, we imported the random library to generate the random number. Now I just wanted to show you that once again, because if you thought that was kind of like hocus pocus, um, if I go into IPython, oops, 3, which is just a better interpreter, you can just type in Python 3, that's fine. If I go import random, Okay, and then if I go random dot rand range, and now it just works like range. So if I want a number between 1 and 100, I just go 101, and now when I hit enter, it returns the number, but it's not assigned anywhere. Once again, this is the interpreter. So I could, in a program, I would have to use it like this. Of course, now in order to see my value, I'd have to say, okay, what is x? That's one way to use it. The other, the other option uh, for the other thing which I wanted to kind of show you with random was random.choice. Now random.choice uh, works kind of like this. Oops, I can't type again. Hold on. So you can now have a iterable and in this iterable you could pick one of them so for example as an iterable I could have a list like this with square brackets or a tuple they're both and you'll learn what those are soon enough but just to say that you can use square brackets or round brackets okay and if I went something like cat, bird, dog, um, what's another pet? Uh, I don't know, snake, something like that. And now if I, you see, every time I do this now, it's going to take a random one. and. Like I said, it doesn't really matter if I use square brackets, although I can't mix them up. I have to be consistent. And I can assign this to something now, right? I could say animal equals. And now I could say, OK, what is the animal? All right, well, that one was the cat. So, And I can do the same type of thing, by the way. So instead of providing something, I could also create a list. Uh, I wonder if this would work. I think it should. If I go range 1, 11, that should give me a number. Well, this isn't, uh, oops. This is not a great, OK. So animal is not a great variable name for a number between 1 to 10. So maybe I can change it and say n for number. and. Uh oh, let's try that again. There you go. So it did change. Um, so that'll work as well. So now just think about what range is providing, right? Range is providing an iterable. So 1 to 10. In this case up here, I'm providing the iterable manually by typing it in. Okay? I would prefer if you're going to try to do something like this you don't use this method but you use rand range so instead of doing this you would go rand range and now you can just simply type in the range 1 comma 11 directly and then you would get the value so this is not really what random dot choice is built to do, although it does work perfectly. That's what rand range is for. Um, 
but random.choice will work on any iterable. So what's an iterable? Well, let's say we went something like this. If you remember, strings are iterables. So for example, we could say something like a, B, C, D, E, F, G. And so now, letter is, right? So you can pick a random letter out of a string that way too. Uh, so random is pretty cool. I just wanted you to see the, the flexibility of it and what you could do with it. Um, there's more things you can do with random. And if you're not sure, right, you can always type in help random to see all the things that you can do. And you can scroll down past the under under functions here, which are built in. And then there, there's, there's choices. Okay, and uh, it's even more. It's you can even do um, more complicated stuff. There's more arguments which you can provide, but I have never really used those. Um, and I actually would suggest you use rand range and not rand int. Rand int actually uh, is not really Pythonic. So don't use that one. Uh, rand range is better. And it even says that. It says this fixes the problem with randint. My, my guess is they might actually get rid of randint one day. Oh, and then there's sample. Yeah, sample is really nice. OK? So um, I, should, I should show you that one as well. Oh, and then there's shuffle. Oh, you got to see shuffle as well. Okay, so those those two, we got to do sample and shuffle as well since we're doing random right now. Um, so let's take a look at. Um, let's say, for example, uh, alpha equals a b c d e f g. Okay. And then I said random dot shuffle alpha. Uh oh. Oh no. So string object does not support item assignment. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's not going to work. Now, how do we do this then? Well, we'd have to change alpha into a list, or actually not even a tuple. We'd have to change it into a list, so because we can change lists. So therefore, I'd have to say like this. I'd have to say alpha equals, and now I would have to type in all the letters. We'll actually um, see how to do this easier later on in the course. But now, if I said A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and now if I said random.shuffle alpha, now if we see what alpha is, it's shuffled. It did exactly what it was said it was going to do. Um, by the way, the reason why we can't shuffle a string is because a string is immutable. Okay. But a list is mutable. That's why we can shuffle it. Mutable just means changeable. Okay. Um, so that's that's pretty cool too. Um, if you remember, I think I had one up where I had um, this as well, right? So, for example, here if I said um, animals equals this and now if I went random dot shuffle animals okay and now let's take a look at animals 
It was cat, bird, dog, snake. Now it's snake, bird, dog, cat. Okay? And by the way, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to change the order to be backwards. Because that's not really, I mean, that just happened to happen. But if I shuffle it again, you can see that it's not just flipping the order. Um, great. Okay, so now I think we were going to go over sample. So random.sample, uh, if we go back to animals here, and we go random.sample animals, and now I say, okay, give me two of them. And there you go. Two, give me two random ones out of that out of the the uh, the list of uh, right now. You can do this a different way. For example, I could say um, I could say random dot sample, and I could say range one comma one hundred and one. So that's all the numbers from 1 to 100. And then I could say, well, give me 10 of them. Just give me 10 numbers from 1 to 100, but at random. And so now that's what it does. It gives me 10 numbers from 1 to 100. That's a random sample of the, of the, the set 1 to 101. Or it's not a set. It's a, it's a list, but I just used that word. So, um, very useful. So the, the ones I think are super useful are rand range, okay? Um, choice, which only gives you like one thing. And then we've got shuffle, and then we've got sample. I hope you guys, at least those ones are the ones I want you to know about from random. And I, like I said, you can go back to the help. Just go typing in. First you have to import random. Then you have to say help bracket random close bracket enter and then you'll, um, you'll see all the documentation about it. So um, let's get out of this and let's go back to our guessing game. So this guessing game so that was kind of like a quick update and, you know, about random there. But going back to our uh, assignment today, what we want to do is we want to have this program such that the computer picks the number and we guess it. So if I run this again, okay, Guess from 1 to 100, take a guess, 50, too low, take a guess, 75, too low, take a guess, uh, 87, too high, uh, how about 80, well let's just try it. 81, too high, um, 78. Okay. Awesome. So you, I hope you kind of see the... Did you understand the, the, the reason I picked those numbers? So every time I cut the, the, the range in half. So my first one was... Okay, I know I have to go from 1 to 100. So what's, a ha what's half of that? 50. Then it said I was too low. OK, now what's my range now? From 50 to 100. Where is the half of that? 75. Perfect. OK, and then I said it was too low. OK, now going from 75 to 100, what's my range now? Well, that's 25 numbers, right? What's half of 25? Well, it's actually 12 and a half. So I just said, just give me 12. So I went 75 plus 12 is 87. So then I guessed 87. Then I said it, I'm too high. Now, 
Now my range is from uh, 75 to 87. So now half of that I think is around 6. So I subtracted 6. Notice each time it tells me you're too high or too, too low. The, the range to the middle is half, of the, is half of the range. So mathematically speaking, think about what I'm doing. I'm taking the high number, taking the low number, subtracting them, and then um, dividing it by 2, and then adding it or subtracting it from where I am based on if it's high or low. Um, let's play it one more time, and this time I'm actually going to write out the math because this is going to help you do the next assignment. And for, before I tell you what the next, uh, let, let me just tell you what the next assignment is before we actually go there. So the next program is to do what you're doing, but the computer is going to do it. So in other words, if we go back to our blackboard, now this is going to be the user. And this is now going to be the computer. OK? In other words, you as the person now will choose the random number between 1 to 100. And you're going to have to be honest. You can't change the number once you choose it as a human. And your job is going to be to type in higher, lower, or correct. The computer's job, on the other hand, okay, it, we're, we're just gonna um, we're gonna stick to one to one hundred, okay. The computer's job is to try and figure out what the number is. Now, in order to do that, you can't just have the computer go, is it one? Is it two? Is it three? Is it four? And then just have the, you know. Um, at some point, obviously, you're gonna get it right, but that's not the fastest way to get to the number, unless you happen to guess one and the answer is one. <laughs> Although that's, that's, just, that's just fluke luck. So um, we have to think about if, if the computer is now doing the guessing, how is the computer going to do the math? So let's actually make some room here and Let's think about now, if we actually run this program again, let's pretend that this is the human, okay, and we run it again. And now, okay, we're gonna stick to one to 100. Okay, now, now this is the, comp this is like the, the computer has to take the guess, not the human. So we're doing the opposite of what this program is, is gonna do, right? So let's go through the math here. So what is our range at this point? So let's actually, uh, let's see if we can make this window a little bit. Um, let's see if we can move it over here and then make it bigger a little bit so we have some more space. OK. So at this point, we know we're at 1 to 100, right? So what's our, what is our uh, biggest number, 100, right? Okay. And so now we're going to go, okay, what's our smallest number? And then we're going to divide by 2. Okay. So to help us do this, uh, let's open up this thing. And then let's kind of move it over here. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll type in here IPython. And so now we go, OK, 100 minus 1, right, divided by 2, 49.5. But we don't want decimal places. So should we change that to an int? 
Well, if we change it to an int, it becomes, if we, if we change it to an int, then it's going to be 49, not 50. So how do we do this? Does anyone, OK, so I guess I, I got to tell you, we got to do some rounding here, right? Um, if I try to remember, is it RND 49.5? I'm trying to remember. No, RND is not it. Round. Let's, I think it might actually be called round. There it is. So, so that works. Okay. And so now we know what our first guess is. Okay. So let's take it. 50. Too low. So now that we know that it, it's too low, um, what's our so what's our lowest number here then? What's our lowest number now? If it's if fifty is too low, what's our lowest number? Fifty, right? And what's our highest number? One hundred. So now we come back to the terminal, not that one, this one, and we say, hmm. We know that, oh, geez, OK, this is not working out the way I was hoping to. There, that's what I wanted to see. So this is now 100 minus 50 is 50. Divide that by 2, OK? so. We, the, in the first one, we didn't do everything right because we didn't actually add 0 to the 50, which was the beginning point. So let's do it properly here. So this is now 50, right? So the range is now 50. What do we have to do to that range? Well, we need to divide it by 2, and we get 25. But where, what do we have to do to that 25? Obviously, 25 is not correct. We have to add it to our bottom. So we have to go 50 plus. And now, that's correct, but it's not an integer. So there you go. That's our next guess. So do you understand that that 50 here is the beginning. This is the end. That's the beginning divided by 2. And that's our next guess. Notice that it would also work for the first one. Because for the first one, when we went from, uh, from like 1 to 100, we would have added um, we would have added the 50 to the 1. OK? I suppose you could say. 0, but that's fine. We're still, this is still our uh, algorithm. But this changes. In other words, this, the 50 can change based on what our lowest value is. And the, this can change what, based on what our maximum value is. There's our lowest value again. And we always divide by 2. So what I'd like you to do is write a program that will ask the user to choose a random number between 1 to 100. And then the computer will try and guess what that number is. OK? Give it a shot. OK, I'll go ahead and pause the video. And we're back. So um, the solution to this is, uh, I already have it here. I can show you um, computer side. So let's open this up and let's take a look at it. So I'm going to say lower equals 0. Must pick 0 even though lowest number is 1. OK. Upper, 100. Input, pick a number between 1 to 100. Hit Enter when done. 
count equals zero, that's just for being able to figure out how long it took. Uh, now, while true, okay, so Oh, interesting. Okay. Round upper plus lower divided by 2 fails for 1 of or 100. Rounding has changed in Python 3. See? This is something that I uh, This is this is something I ran into. Uh, unfortunately, I did not remember this to warn you guys about it. Uh, so I use this hack to fix the rounding issue. Um, and so what I did is I added the, the lower number plus the, the, the upper number, but I added 1 plus the lower number. And then I floor divisioned it by 2. Okay, that, That'll do it the proper way. Uh, you can try these two. I mean, um, here I can show you the difference in the in the terminal. Uh, oops, we should get out of this thing. Let's open up here and let me just quickly kind of uh, go over this. So if I if I went um, round upper plus lower, so let's go round, and I'll go uh, one hundred plus 0 and then let's go divided by 2 I get 50 um, but if I go I wonder if, it, if it's not for that one but for a different one if I go uh, upper 100 plus 0 plus 1 is 1 floor division 2 that gives me 50 as well um, I'm wondering if it's for a different number that um, let's try let's try 50 and 100 so it would be 100, no wait, yeah, so 100 plus 50 <laughs> divided by 2 round, that gives me 75, hmm. I'm wondering why 100 plus 151 uh, no no I think yeah well that that's obviously not right because I had to go uh, 100 and then 51 here. Yeah, I guess they both work. I'm not sure why I put that. I can't remember the reason. Um, but maybe if I try it later, I might figure it out. Anyways, um, now I'm increasing count. So perhaps both of these will work. Line 7 and 8 might both work. Um, I, I can't remember why I put that note about round failing. Um, reply here is input is the number guess and then correct is C lower is L higher is H and then I just in case they type in a uppercase if the reply is C break and we're done if the reply is lower then upper equals guess and if the reply is higher then lower equals guess and then else uh, response not recognized, and that's the whole program. Okay. So 
this is a good example of uh, doing both ends of this of this guessing game. So the next little assignment which I want you guys to do is we're going to have a, a test right now. And I want you to test yourself. I'm going to show you a computer program. And what I want you to do is I want you to not type it out, but rather I want you to go through the code with a piece of paper. So take out a piece of paper right now. And, and what I want you to do with that piece of paper is use it like this. So if you see uh, if you see some code, I want you to write down variables like this, and I want you to populate them as they change, and then on paper, okay? And then once you get to the solution, once you get to the end of the program, then you can say, okay, this is this is what the end is. This is what the res output is. So here is the. I'll show you what the code is. Okay, and um, let's open it up here in Genie. Let's go to Fun, and here it is, number one. Okay, so remember, I don't want you to just take out a piece of paper right now. Don't type it out. See if you can figure out what the output of this program is because this is what you're going to have to do on your test. Okay? I'll pause the video now. I'll give you time to figure out what the answer is. What is the output of this program? So you won't have the computer during the test to figure this out. Go. Okay, we're back. All right, ready guys? Hope you guys figured out an answer for it, for the output. And here is the answer. Zero, zero. So the answer for total was zero, and the answer for n was zero. OK, if you did not get this correct, if you got it wrong, what I suggest you do is open up either one of two things. Okay, you can do this one of two ways. You can either go to the internet and go to pythontutor.com and go to visualize your code now and then come over here, go control A, control C, and go back to the internet and go control V and then visualize execution then you would go next 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 now you can see how things change you notice how you can see that the numbers changing right here I'm not going to go through the logic with you right now but I want you to there it is there's the output so this is how you would go through it yourself okay now if you don't want to use that, you can also use Thony. Thony will do the same type of thing. Okay? You remember, I think it was Control F5 in Thony, and then I think it was F7, 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 F7. Does the same thing as uh, PythonTutor.com. Okay? So let's do one more, uh, and then we'll call it a day today. So let's go to open. And let's go W2. Ready? Take out your paper and figure out the answer, the output of this program. What is the output? Pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, we're back. Let's see if you figured out what the solution or the output this is. Here we go. And the output is 10, 11, 8, 9, 6, 7. If you were able to get that, well done. Give yourself a pat on the back. Okay? 
So that's it for today's lesson. Uh, next day, we'll continue. See you next time.